today what we're doing today is we're gonna do uh, do some brake jobs basically it's gonna be a for a 2005 Mercedes C230 we're gonna do the front rotors and brake pads all the way around so stay tuned here we go So now we got here, now we got here the front brake rotors, the rear brake rotors, the rear pads, the front pads, and I ordered two sensors if you need to know the part number. And if I don't need the other one, because I believe the vehicle calls for two, one in the front, one in the back. So if I do not need it, I'll return one. Let me at least show you what the sensor looks like. That's it, this little tiny thing. And this is just the electronic wear sensor. That's it. All right. I also bought the set screws for the rotors. Okay. They're tiny. Here's the part number. You can read it. Here's the part number for the rotor. Front rotor. Here's the part number for the rear rotor. The rear brake pads. And the front brake pads. Okay. And uh, these all have warranty. Okay. I got it at my local auto parts stores. Everything's got a warranty here. Everything's got a warranty. I would not buy anything without a warranty. That's why I don't like going to the dealer. They're expensive and then no warranty. All right, so here we go, guys. We're installing it. mil it's gonna go right here this one right here and this one right there okay the whole thing will come out brake rotor brand new look at that look at that so, I'm gonna use the plastic itself now I don't get my paws all dirty
It's already got Loctite already built in. So, here it is. <laughs> Alright, takes a, uses a T30. Torx bit 30. T30. Okay. 18 millimeter socket. Tighten them down. And they need to be torqued to 80 foot pounds. Okay? So here we go. All right, as you guys can see, simple, just push the pin out, okay? Enough, and then the brake pads do slide out, okay? Just like a motorcycle, right? Simple, in and out. So, here, here are my brake pads, right? It's nice and wrapped. That's the brand. Yep, it was time. It was time. I made a simple mistake over here. I realized that I made a simple brake shim mistake. Reason why I noticed it was I was, on, I was on the passenger side and I was taking the other one out. The other one just like this. Well, guess what? It flew out, but I realized that I have it mounted backwards. So I'm gonna take a video to let you know that I screwed up, but I came back to come, you know, on the driver's side to go fix it. So should be a simple, quick fix. Now that I've done this already a couple times. Because I do know one thing, this shim flew off last time. So, I want to make sure that it doesn't fly out. All right, so, see, I had it this way. It really goes out this way, see? It hooks there. And then, tap it in with the other one. Get the top one installed, pushed in, best you can, right? And then on the bottom one, I figured out that I put a screwdriver, put tension on it, slide the other one in, best you can. There you go. And it should, there you go. Snap into place. See, now it, now it is where it needs to be. So I'm glad I went back and fixed it because this vehicle, my wife and my daughter is going to be driving it. So I got to make sure it's up to par. Okay. But at least I came back and, and man enough to admit that I screwed up. But guess what? All done. 
fix the problem and we're good now. All right, guys, just wanted to show you that. All right, boys, did one side already in the front. On the passenger side, rinse and repeat. Same thing, rinse and repeat. Same thing you saw, just re rewind that video, you go from there, buddy. All right, guys. And here, here's where we got the sensor. Pop that bad boy out, and then pry it out from here. Bop. And you should be good. Let's see if this one's gonna cooperate with me. Yes, it will. You better. <laughs> it stayed with the brake pad, but that's okay. That's coming out anyway, so. But see, sometimes you get that. <laughs> All right, so then now, now we're gonna move into the rear, okay? So next clip you're gonna see, I'll be working on the rear ones, okay? All right. All right, down to the rears. So here we go. One piston, and, well, yeah, one piston, one shim, and what a th one through pin. Okay, same setup as a motorcycle setup. These actually look like motorcycle brakes. It's how small they look. But I have to take the brackets out in the back. I believe they're 16 millimeters, so one here, one there. Undo that. Hold on to the caliper, whichever way. I can probably throw it over here and let it hang. Remove the rotor, put the new one in. Remember, T30. And um, remove, replace, and uh, then install this back again, and then pop that pin out. And then uh, collapse the piston. Just kind of bring it in, put the new pads, put the anti shim, anti rattle shim back in there, and we should be good to go. All right, so here we go. All right, so now, here's the parking brake on these things. That's got good meat. Plenty of meat. So, no need to change it. Because parking brakes don't get used. They rarely get used, see? That's a lot of meat right there. So, that's all the way around. And because the parking brakes don't get used, they're not going to get changed. It's gonna get cleaned up and that's it. All right. Get yourself a 764 steel drill bit. Go into the hole here. Tap it. tension back into this here There you go. All right. Hopefully that should be it. Put a screwdriver. Spread spread the little pistons out. Don't need to be all fancy as long as you. There you go. Bing. Look at that. She had plenty of meat on this one, but if I'm gonna do the fronts, might as well do the rears. You get more of the wear in the front anyway, so everybody knows that. 
because 70% of your breaking, oh my gosh, you still have plenty of meat on this one here. So, all right, well, nevertheless, we're already here. We're gonna put new. As to what she had before, and this is the difference when they're brand new. They look like a good, close to three eighths of an inch, almost half inch. And these are down to a quarter. So they wore down about halfway. That looks like halfway. I wanna take one and compare that one with the other. You guys can see how much wear that is. Yeah, substantial, but still enough meat on this one. But again, nevertheless, we're gonna put it in. We're already here. So. we do it boys and girls that's how we do it start putting the pin back in anti rattle this goes on the bottom this one goes on the top and then the pressure is what keeps it in place okay let's see how good I can do let's see Push it in. Come on, come on, I had this. Come on. Almost, almost. All right, I just gotta get comfortable. That's all. I'm not comfortable right now. All right, now I'm comfortable. Just gotta push it in. Do it by hand. You go, and then tap it in. <clears throat> Oops, camera, you all right, camera? A little awkward trying to find a spot for the camera. How I don't block the camera. All right, that's flush. That's flush. We can do that. There's tension there. There you go. Good. Good. Anti-rattle. We won't let it fly out. Keeps it in place. Lock tight. Now I just got to put the rim. We're good, guys. We're good. All right, so now I got the last rotor, the one in the rear. They come with oil. These come with oil. The front ones didn't have a, a lick of oil or a spit of oil. I might as well just kind of get it when I can and make sure that my paws, I don't touch it with my paws, my greasy, greasy, greasy paws. Make sure you get the oil out and that's the main thing. That way they don't rust because they might stay in the warehouse for a long time and you never know how the warehouses are. If they have, you know, coolant, a AC or whatever, what have you. Also, come to find out that the rear um, brake calipers do not have the sensor. I checked on both of them. So the only sensor basically will be the front ones. So I bought two. I'm gonna return one because it's like 10 bucks. I'm like, hey, 10 bucks is 10 bucks. So we'll go from there. And uh, just gotta slap this thing on. Just gotta slap it on, bolt it on. Do the same step, rinse and repeat like I did on the other side of the, uh, you know, remove that one pin, collapse the uh, piston on both sides, and 
slide the other ones out slide the new ones in put the anti uh, rattle shim back in and we good guys we good all right so here we go Last one. These things are about two dollars and fifty cents, but it's worth it. I don't want to go with the old one. Might as well go with new. Again, like I said, this vehicle, my daughter's gonna inherit it. She's uh, gonna be fourteen soon. A few more years, she's gonna be driving it. I might change the brake pads, but at least I know they're gonna be good to go. Yeah. Again, we go snug with these things. Anyway, it's no big deal. So there you go, snug, done. All right, here comes the caliper. Uh, again, we're doing the same thing. Putting a little Loctite. caliber out put it back in move you guys over here so you can see the whole mess that I got in the back oh may have to collapse may have to spread apart this here caliper so There you go, quick, quick and easy. Again, 16 millimeter in the back for the brake caliper on the bracket. There you go. Ah. Oh. I got the breaker bar. Just tighten them up that way. Ah. There you go. That's good. Beautiful. A lot of force in that. Alright, so here we go. Little drill bit. 764 so you can get it in here. Okay. There you go. You guys know the procedure. Put a screwdriver to it. Spread out the piston. Simple, easy. There you go. There you go. Boom. Out. Let me spray.
squirt this piston lap a little bit more. There you go. So you got the uh, shim in the back built in. Beautiful. Do the same to this one. Pull it out. Yep, plenty of meat. That one had some wear, but okay. And then again, press the piston back in. Just use a long screwdriver. Make sure you don't ruin the boot in the back. Done. Again, the pin. We got the pin back again. Let's go put it back in. Anti-rattle clip goes this way, and then the top one, and compress it in, and slide this bad boy in. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had this thing, I had this thing going. There you go. <laughs> ah. All right, put it back in. Oh, this way. Before I screw up, I don't want to screw up. It is this way. It is this way. All right, guys. So the GoPro died. I'm using my phone. Let me know which one's better, my phone or the GoPro on the resolution. All right. So I was able to just basically push this anti-rattle spring, push it in and pop it in. And I was able to mount it. I already got the bolts here. They're torqued. And, um... Right here, you'll see the torque. I believe uh, I'll Google it. Like I said, I was going to Google it. I'm going to put it out down below on the bottom pretty soon. All right. I'm going to put it down on the bottom, and we should be good to go. That way you guys know where the uh, torque is for the caliper. Um, that's it. Now I just got to put in the, uh, the wheel. Mount it up. Torque it. Good to go. Go for a test. Clean up before I get in my wife's vehicle because I don't want to mess this up. We are going for a spin. Don't forget to uh, pump your brakes multiple times until the brake pads feel tight. Yeah, feels good. Oh yeah. So I'm just gonna go around the block, test the vehicle, make sure that uh, the brake job that I did, that it works. So far so good. Oh yeah, feels good. There you go, stops. This will work. All I'm doing is I'm looking for rattle squeaks. All right, so far so good, nice and quiet. And no better way to test the vehicle while you're going around the block. That way the wifey or whoever, they won't say, uh, hey, there's a noise. So we're just making sure that things are working out. Stop right here, go around, slow down. So far, no squeaks, no rattle. Vehicle runs great. Not bad. This had to come in before my truck. All because I had the brake wear sensor come up on the vehicle on the digital dash. So the wife was like, hey, I need brakes. My vehicle brakes. And this whole this whole ordeal cost me about almost 500 bucks. Because uh, Mercedes parts, you know, Mercedes parts are not cheap. It's not like a Honda Civic. They're expensive. All right, boys. Yeah.